able to use this technology to save people li people's lives, I think that's what matters the most. Hi, hi, everybody. It's another one episode of our SaaS and tech interviews with our expert. And our guest today is Corey Morris. Hi, Corey. Hey, how you doing? I'm pretty, pretty okay. And you? Oh. I'm doing great. Doing great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time. Just to give a little bit of a background, Corey is a former, a former global marketing manager in Airbnb. Among his old career journey, Corey had a lot of various experiences. He was a co-host in a TED Talk Denmark. He was a CMO of a startup guest that was later on acquired by Airbnb. And everything led him to the point where he is today is a CMO of Synergy XR. So, very impressive. How do you feel about your career? <laughs> it was probably a tough journey. <laughs> No, it's 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 weird. It's also just uh, kind of uh, interesting to think about uh, that you actually do have a career, right? I guess when you're young, you don't really think about what that trajectory is going to look like. But uh, I guess, look, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, I've been incredibly lucky. I think that's the best way to put it. But I'm happy where I've come from, and I'm happy where I am now. Perfect. Uh, beautiful. Well. You you, you have a lot of things to be proud of. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Metaverse, amazing, immersive and inevitable. And I guess the topic is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, and the reason why the topic was chosen is because Corey on a daily basis works with the um, discovering amazing opportunities that Metaverse provides. So Corey, could you please tell a couple of words about Synergy XR and what you're guys doing there? Yeah, so so I'm like you said, I'm the CMO of this amazing company based in Denmark called called Synergy uh, XR. We were actually called Unity Studios until about a, a year ago, uh, and we were founded by the same founders of Unity Technologies. I don't know if you guys have heard of this this unicorn company uh, who basically makes uh, ninety percent of the games that you have on your uh, on your iPhone. Uh, but Synergy XR is a no-code cloud-based platform that basically lets companies work in the metaverse. So it lets them do things like design, develop, sell, market, and support products and services uh, across all XR devices. So what I mean by that, so XR is extended reality, and that's augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. Um, we like to... Uh, tell people that it's effectively a content management system similar to WordPress, similar to Wix, mm -hmm. just in the metaverse. Because most people, when they try to get started or they try to try to work in this type of things, they're not 3D designers, they're not 3D developers, they're not these coders. So they want to work in the metaverse, they want to work with the technology, but they don't really have a platform mm -hmm. to do that. That's where we come into the picture. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, I know about you that you are currently living in Denmark, but I also right. know that you are US born um, meteorology and oceanography specialist that serve in US Navy. So That's what right. brought you to Denmark? Yeah, what brought me to Denmark? Uh, I guess the short answer is love. Um, oh, tell us more yeah, about that's, that. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how it always is, right? No, um, as you mentioned, I was in uh, I was in the U.S. Navy. I was really happy to and privileged to, to serve five years uh, in, in the Navy. My last tour of duty was uh, on the island of Crete, so one of the actually the largest uh, Greek island. Believe it or not, we have a U.S. Navy base there. We have military bases all over <laughs> all over the world. Yeah, for for better or worse. Um, but I was there, uh, stationed there for a year, um, met this beautiful Danish girl who swept me off my feet and brought me back to Denmark and I've been here for, uh, been here for 21 years. Nice, beautiful story. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a great story. It's, it's even more a, a beautiful story because we're still together. We've been married for, for 21, 21 years now, have two oh, wow. uh, amazing, amazing uh, children. So it's... Uh, the story uh, is, is, is still still uh, ongoing. Oh, wow. Well, beautiful. Thank you. Um, uh, going back to business, <laughs> yeah. um, as, a, as a, a chief marketing officer of a startup called Guest, you and your yeah. team get Guest acquired by, by Airbnb in 2019. Right. 
Right. So, in your opinion, was it a successful acquisition? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, across the board. I mean, we, uh, so I joined the company, I think I was with them for a year and a half, and we managed to expand to 17 markets just in a, in a relatively Ooh. short period of time. We were still a, a fairly small team, I think, including all of our partners. I think we were less than 20, 25 employees. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, you know, uh, before you know it, uh, we're, we, we become a part of this huge unicorn organization with 10,000 employees. So for us, the small team with such an ambitious goal of, of you know, making it easier for people to uh, book creative meeting spaces in much the same fashion as, as you could book an Airbnb, uh, it was definitely kind of a dream come true for us. And a, and a crazy ride, a hell of a ride. I was actually with my CEO just last week at another uh, event we're, we're still in the startup uh, environment <laughs> together and 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 I said honest I was like it's been a while since I've talked to you it's like but man I can't I said, well, how, how are you feeling right now and he's like Corey that was a crazy ride it was absolutely, <laughs> it was absolutely nuts um it was it was fun it was fun beautiful um well it, it, it is a definition of dreamy acquisition for a startup uh and uh, my question is what was that that you had guys that made airbnb prefer you and not the others um yeah so i really i think it comes down to a few things um i think that we had really good traction i think that we were able to demonstrate that this idea could expand quite quite fast mm -hmm. i definitely think that we were in an area that airbnb definitely had on their radar because airbnb you know uh, they were doing experiences. They had obviously so many different levels of, of vacation rentals and the whole idea of other properties on the market that were being unused. For example, creative meeting spaces. It was on their, it was on their, their, their roadmap, so to speak. I think when you look in terms of mergers and acquisitions, you have two, often you have two options. You can build it or you can buy it we were a quick way for them to get inventory we had a really good team we built all the technology ourselves um and i think all of those things combined made it much easier for airbnb just to enter the market with this with this product mm -hmm. so at the point where they reach you you're already fully fully ready for that well yeah yeah because um, when you, again when you're looking at mergers and acquisitions or just you know growth in general you're looking okay do, do they have the technology do they have the traction do they have the team and i think we were able to tick all those those boxes mm -hmm. um and then obviously we were super excited about being able to work you know uh with, with such a, a large large company that could have gone up you know a bunch of different directions but uh we went through the whole the whole acquisition and suddenly became you know fully immersed into the uh, airbnb airbnb team and, and for those two years that was uh, probably the wildest years uh, of, of my life. I've never traveled as much as, as, as I have, um, but you have to do that though. I know this may not be the topic of, of our talk today, but when you do uh, join a new company, it's so important to spend as much face time with, with the new company, new colleagues uh, as, as possible. Obviously our headquarters is on the other side of the world. So I spent a lot of time traveling from Copenhagen to, uh, to San Francisco, uh, but it was, it was well worth it. Beautiful. Well, congrats on your dreamy acquisition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have enormous um, marketing experience as a marketer yourself. Now you are a chief marketing officer in Synergy XR, a no-code corporate metaverse builder. So could you please share how is working from the marketing point of view in the metaverse is different from the way we marketers do today? No, that's a great question. And I think the simplest way of approaching this is just really looking or taking a step back and saying, you know, what is the metaverse really? And and what I like to tell people is that it's, it's effectively the next evolution of the internet. And if you start there, then you can really begin to understand, okay, wow, I don't think there's any CMO out there today who doesn't, most of their work doesn't, you know, revolve around the internet as we know it today. Mm -hmm. So. When I talk about it's the next evolution of the internet, it's where we'll be able to use technology like augmented and virtual reality to kind of immerse ourselves in these vibrant digital worlds where a lot of people are going to be spending more and more time. We saw it back in 2005 uh, where we had this, a Second Life. I don't know if you remember Second Life. 
it was kind of a precursor, maybe a little bit too early because it was still a very much, it was still a very 2D experience where you're interacting with it through a screen and you didn't really have a lot of options of building things. Uh, what we, what, what's happened between then and now is the fact that technology has advanced much faster. We now have devices like we didn't have before, which we can put on our wearable devices, which we can put on our heads, which allow us to enter into these vibrant digital worlds. Um, we're going to see we're going to see the physical and the digital worlds become a lot more combined. So now, like I was saying before, we'll be able to go into our screens, which is hard to imagine, but that's what happens when you go into virtual reality. Yeah. But what's equally interesting is that the things that we're used to interacting with on our, our screens, so our laptops, our desktops, and also our phones and tablets, those digital elements will be layered on top of our physical world. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are talking about this digital concept where the physical and the digital become one. Uh, and that's all, all, all powered around the idea of spatial 3D. So information will be available in, in new and more powerful ways. Mm -hmm. And what's exciting about that is it's, it's gonna radically change, I would say accelerate and augment change because change can be positive change can be negative it's going to improve uh the way that we live work and play and because it will be a new opportunity for marketers to create brand experience to put their products put their services in front of people uh based upon time based upon location which may be also based upon feelings uh it's going to you know give us the opportunities marketers to um to connect with our customers in new and powerful ways and i think that's you know obviously i'm the cmo of this company but i, I look at it often in two lanes you know how can we market this idea what does it mean for people in my profession mm -hmm. uh, but also just what does this mean just you know for the world uh, at, at, a, at a much higher level mm -hmm. looking forward i i really looking forward to see that well, I mean, it, it, you know, there, there's a lot of things that they need to be they need to be focused on as well. There's lots of ethical issues as well because we're suddenly, you know, we're suddenly sharing a whole other dimension of data with companies that hasn't been available for. Suddenly, you get facial recognition. We've seen that some parts of the world can abuse the idea of facial recognition by suddenly monitoring people around the world. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have a blank check to use this data uh, as as we want to, which is, you know. I definitely think that's a conversation that we have to start uh, having because do we want to share this information uh, with, with everyone? Yeah, I guess those privacy and security, data security issues are one of the most intensively discussed uh, um, issues when it comes to metaverse and uh, Especially when you're talking about the corporate metaverse, which is what we work with because yeah. companies uh, who are doing this in the capacity of their, of their, their organizations aren't necessarily super excited about uh, sharing all this information with companies like Meta, Microsoft, Google. Understandable, or, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. True that. Uh, cool. So Metaverse is a pretty much a relatively new notion and yeah. corporate Metaverse is even newer. So I would say we are still on a stage where we are discovering those uh, amazing and endless uh, possibilities and uh, some might not even come across our minds yet. Can you please give some of the examples of how companies are already using it today? Yeah, so, so the corporate metaverse, the very heart of the corporate metaverse, as I talked about before, the metaverse is the next evolution of the internet, just, just more in 3D, spatial. And what, what we talk about with the corporate metaverse is effectively how businesses are going to use this, is gonna use the, the metaverse. Um, if, if you want to get into a time capsule with me real quick, then let's just go back 30 years, uh, early 90s. The internet is coming out. Uh, and and how were companies really using the internet back in, let's just say, the mid-90s? Uh, a lot of the companies that I was involved in, they were using it in terms of an intranet. So it's been a while since we've talked about the internet versus the intranet. 
But that's where we are right now when it comes to the metaverse versus the corporate metaverse. So what we're working with companies to do right now is is to create their own metaverse. It's a closed off environment. Obviously, uh, you can come in, but it's through invitation only. We focus a lot on privacy. We focus a lot on security, uh, especially when it, when it comes to like you know the design development process of products and services. So IP is very important. That's where we are right now. We don't have a standard platform for these metaverses to be connected the same way that you can go into a browser today and you can put in um, a, a web address and suddenly jump from website to website. That will happen in the future, but we're not there quite yet. Mm -hmm. So we're also seeing the very early stages of how companies are leveraging things like augmented virtual and mixed reality, which effectively are our gateways to the, the so-called metaverse. Um, I have a few examples. We actually just did a really popular podcast um, about a month and a half ago. I had about 1,500 people sign up for it where we talked about 12 ways that companies are already using the metaverse in 2022. And we're so going to link it definitely in our yeah, blog. Please, yeah, please sure. share that. It's, 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 a great, um, it's a great webinar and we, we talked about a lot of things. I, um, I want to spotlight a few of those. If we look in e-commerce, for example, one of the things that we, we see uh, a lot of focus on today is the whole try before you buy movement. So uh, a really good example is uh, Adidas uh, have made it possible for you to take a tablet or most often your phone and basically look at your feet and then see how the shoes that you possibly want to buy are actually going to look on your feet. So that's using something like augmented reality. It lets you see before you buy or, or try before you, not, or not really try before you buy because you can't feel if they're a good fit, but you can definitely see them. Um, and that's basically just, that's through their app. Uh, it's a way of obviously boosting their overall e-commerce sales. But what it does, it removes the pain point of having to buy five different pair of those and then have them sent home to you. That obviously has a huge environmental impact. It's costing them a lot of money, and most of the time you're going to send those back anyway. Um, but it's also um, it's also making a, a much much more powerful user experience for you, I think, because you can easily just with a touch of a button uh, try different colors, different uh, different styles. I think that's a really good example of uh, of e-commerce. I think we're going to see a lot of that in terms of like virtual dressing rooms. I'll tell you what, I went out this past weekend. I was trying to buy some new sweaters. Um, went through the store, had 10 of them on my arm, go to the dressing room. I mean, I'm sweating after like the second one. I don't have a lot of room in my Get dressing in room. And I'm like, there has to be a more effective way uh, to, to do this. So, Did you buy one so in the end after all? I didn't, I didn't because I actually had to leave them in there because I was sweating so much. I started feeling claustrophobic because like, I got to get the hell out of here. Um, so I went back home <laughs> and I went online. I went to my favorite app and I just, I did like, I told myself I would, I'm not, I'm going to stop doing I ordered far too much and I ordered different sizes, different <laughs> colors. And I'm probably going to end up sending half of it back, but that's where we are right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> another one, uh, is in terms of remote support. So imagine you and I work for a company that we process something. Mm -hmm. Those machines go down, they're on the other side of the world, maybe they're in remote locations. What companies typically do is they have a, a hardcore team of technicians and they'll send those technicians out to the location and they'll fix that product. Because downtime is a bad time for companies. Downtime costs millions. Yeah. So what we see companies doing now is using mixed reality where they're able to put on, um, they're able to give frontline employees, the people who are on location, mm -hmm. or, but who are maybe not the technical experts, they can give them these special type of glasses. Most often it's it's a Microsoft HoloLens 2 glasses. And that expert can sit in an office just like me right now, see what that frontline employee is seeing, be able to send them diagrams, schematics. They're able, the, the frontline employee is able to see my video. And the cool thing is that the frontline employee can use their hands so basically, all the stuff that I'm tossing them from my computer is, is 3D. They can see it and they can actually touch it with their hands and move it around. What I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is that these companies can fix these problems much faster 
without having to send personnel to the front line. Mm -hmm. One of the companies that we worked with um, was able to reduce their downtime from two to three days just to two to three hours. So that does a few things, saves the company a ton of money, mm -hmm. but also reduces the travel time required to get that expert from A to Z, but also include, inclu obviously that has a huge environmental impact, of course, but it also improves life quality uh, of everyone. Uh, no, I mean, even if you're the frontline employee, the, the, the time when that machine is down, that's a, that's a very stressful period for you, right? As is for that person who always has to be on standby and know that at any moment's notice, I'm going to have to run out and go and fix this machine. That's really not a good work-life balance for, 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 for either of those. Um, I got one more for you, and I think this one's really good. Yeah. So um, anyone who has suffered from the fear of public speaking knows that the best way of overcoming that is through practice, practice, practice. But it's really hard to gather a group of people and say, hey, I want to practice on you. <laughs> now listen so, to me. <laughs> yeah. So there's this really cool company called Mersion, and it's, it's included. Uh, we talk about it in the in the webinar. We also have an ebook about that as well. Maybe we can link to that as well. Sure. Um, but they offer things for, for example, like leadership training, presentation skill training, mental health awareness. Uh, and this is where we're able to use like virtual reality to immerse people into these environments. Oftentimes it's stressful environments that allow them to basically trick their brains into thinking that it's real life and, uh, and help them, help them overcome some of these hurdles, some of these challenges. You know, giving feedback to employees, it seems easy in theory, but actually doing it in practice, often when you're met with, with, with pushback, it requires training. So this is really where we see you know, the, the metaverse, XR technology, whatever you want to call it, using virtual reality, using the power of simulation to create another level of emotional connection that we're maybe not able to do in other environments. Now, what people have done before is they've done like these mock presentations, they've done like these mock feedback sessions. And while those are really good and very obviously much more realistic, but also more time consuming, because in this case, this person can put on their glasses and they can go in, they can do this from anywhere, anytime, and they can do it as many times as they, as they want to. So those are three really good examples of how companies uh, are, are using them today. Amazing, amazing. And uh, I just want to add that I swear the example with the, with the clothes and with the shoes, I swear I had this idea when I was eight years old. No, I, not, <laughs> I had right. no idea what is a metaverse because obviously it was long ago, but I had that 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 idea in my mind. <laughs> I think we've all been in that situation yeah. where dressing rooms seems to be an outdated practice. We have a huge boom in e-commerce now. That's been accelerated greatly because of you know the whole pandemic. But I do I do know people who work in the uh, the, the fashion industry, and it is a pretty big problem that return rates are so high. Um, and I don't, I don't think that's good for, uh, for, for the environment. It's obviously not the best customer experience. So I'm happy to see that, uh, that, that the companies are making, uh, using the metaverse, using this technology to, 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 to alleviate some of these pain points. That's amazing. And those, uh, those examples that you gave are pretty much, let's say, decent. So tell me, for, please, what is the craziest use case you've heard so far? Yeah, so I did a little research on that, and, and, and I think one, I love it when this technology has a more human impact. One thing is making it you know easier for us to buy more crap, which we probably don't need uh, anyway. The other is to you know teach us the soft skills, but when you can save people's lives, I think that's really where it matters the most. So this one is an example from the healthcare industry, and it's where a group of physicians around the world were able to train in virtual reality to learn how to save the lives of these co-joined uh, co uh, twins in uh, in Brazil. Um, they were able to use, yeah, they were able to, so when you do an MRI, MRI scan, when you do a CT scan, you can often, well, you actually do get a 3D model. Mm -hmm. So what these doctors were able to do is they were able to, to use uh, those models and meet in virtual reality and kind of plan how they wanted to go about uh, this, this surgery. Um, I think they did it over a three-month period just to figure out how we were going to do this. 
Um, and it ended, ended up becoming one of the world, it was one of the most difficult and complex conjoined uh, twin separation in, in the world. Um, I don't think that's the only reason why they were successful, but it did allow them to go in and again, using a simulated environment, using a, a new technology to improve the way they were going to do it. It was a more concerted effort because they had t experts from all around the world being able to go in and see things. Which you're, able, which you're able to do in 3D and not 2D. I think it was a huge contributor to this being a, a successful um, a surgery. Absolutely. So again, just to kind of recap, when it has, when it, when you're, when you're able to use this technology to save people li people's lives, I think that's when it matters the most. Wow, that's an amazing example. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Um, we are we are closing, let's say, our main part of the questions with the very okay. last question. If you met. 10 years old, Corey, what would you tell that guy? Yeah, um, <laughs> I would say don't worry about that girl who just broke up with you. <laughs> stop, stop crying, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be fine. Uh, I'd probably That's grab helpful. you by the shoulders. <laughs> I'd probably say, dude, we got this, don't worry. We're, you know, we're gonna be fine. Life is gonna be really, really hard for us. Uh, you're, you know, you're, you're going to be tossed uh, quite a few uh, speedball curveballs, but at the end of the day, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, I'm also going to say that you have absolutely no idea how unpredictable, how crazy this ride is going to be, but just, you know, hang, hang on, hang tight, and remember to enjoy every single moment. Um, and I'd probably end up by saying, uh, don't change a single thing about you. Oh, that's precious. Thank but that's you, a pretty poignant thing, though, to think about having a conversation with your ten-year-old self, right? Because I mean, do you want them to really change anything, or does you really? I guess it has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself today, right? Because everything is a contributor to who you are today. Yeah, uh, we just yesterday had a conversation with one of my friends, actually about that, and we just came to the point where, well, it's so difficult to be somebody else or pretend to be somebody who you are not just because it's so energy consuming yeah it's so yeah. much easier just to be yourself for it's lazy people so hard, it's right? the best <laughs> well, we all have our shortcomings and obviously if i could go and say hey maybe you should be more mindful of this or that but look at the end of the day i think some of our shortcomings also kind of help contribute to to making the person that we are nobody's perfect i mean my wife can tell you that. <laughs> my, co my colleague, my and colleague yes, can tell you that. And yes, she's still with you. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. also know. I have these. You know, we all have these these conversations with ourselves. Just like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I say that? I should be more mindful of that. But I think it all. You know, at the end of the day, um, if we're happy with ourselves, and we also have to be aware that uh, the good comes with the bad. Sometimes you you have the you have the good guy over yeah. here and the bad guy, but they kind of work together. Sometimes you know, some of them speak 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 more. Yeah, the other yeah, ones. I think I think so <laughs> very much, but it, it all depends, right? Yeah, true that. Thank you very much. Well, let's go to our rapid fire round. Excited about this. <laughs> what are you proud of the most? Who am I proud of the most? Um, who I become. Cool. What is your biggest? Do you want, do you want, do you want short, snappy answers? Well, it is short, snappy answers, but if you would like to elaborate on that. Feel free. I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I've come from very little and uh, that I've managed to, sh to achieve what I have in my life, uh, both in terms of, of my professional life and also my personal life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you give us a little bit more? Well, like just, yeah, just I mean, one I, aspect. I, I come from, I come from a, a part of the world which maybe there aren't that high expectations for, for, for people. Um, I don't want it to get too personal here, but yeah. uh, let's just say that where I, the, the station that I've reached in life was uh, not something that I probably neither myself or anyone else really expected. So um, um, I'm very proud of where I've come. Bravo. What is your biggest regret? <laughs> uh, my biggest regret is uh, probably uh, doubting myself that I couldn't have gotten to where I was and maybe I could have actually gotten further. Um, but uh, I think that's, I think it's kind of natural though to have imposter syndrome, to have self-doubt. That can also be turned to something positive sometimes. But I mean, I don't like to go back 
and, and, and you know, regret doing anything. I try to flush it and just move on because uh, there's very little to gain from it. Obviously, if you can reflect on things, you can learn from things. Uh, the most important thing is, is just to, you know, look, keep it in the past and then just try to focus on what you can change going forward. Perfect. What is your longest marathon? <laughs> I know you're a runner. So, um, I have done a 100 kilometer. Funny story, I signed Ooh. up for a run. It was during Corona, it got canceled. And I was like, look, I've done all this training. I'm going to do it. So I ran a 100 kilometer run all by myself on a five kilometer loop. Um, and I just had everything prepared in the back of the, the trunk of my car. So every time I did a 5K loop, if I needed to stop and grab something, um, then I picked up some food, but yeah, it took me, it took me about nine, 10 hours, but uh, I'm happy I did it. Wow. <laughs> That's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I don't believe that people do that for pleasure. So what is the, what is the lesson that you learned from, from doing marathons? I think the Obviously lesson is that you can, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Uh, and especially when it comes to like, you know, uh, physical endurance, which I love these whole endurance exercises, that it's often a matter of mind over matter. But running for me and the reason I've been so enamored with running for so many years is it's a physical thing, it's a mental thing, and it's a spiritual thing. I've never regretted going for a run after I've come back from a run. I guess the difficult point is to just make yourself, you make yourself well, the standing out from the chair. Is getting those damn shoes on yeah. and getting out the door. But once you've often taken, maybe not always the first step, because mm -hmm. sometimes the mm -hmm. first step can be a little hard. But after maybe like the the 100th step, you're like, yeah, okay. yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know why it was so hard for me <laughs> to get out. So it's it's almost uh, it's almost affirming every time you get out that uh, it's, it's it's well worth it. Cool, cool, yeah. And the very last question. Well, in the end of the day. If you would have to define yourself with just one word, one role, I don't know, father, husband, human, marketer, professional, whatever you choose, what, which word would you choose? Fighter. Thank you, Corey. That was all from my side. Thank you. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.